Is this still a good idea to become a web developer? Well, I'm going to tell you what you should do, what you don't need to be doing, and why I think it's still the best career option in 2023. So you're watching this, are you concerned about your future? You wanted to be a web developer, but now it looks like the environment has changed. Big tech has had massive layoffs in a lot of their companies. Interest rates are rising. There's a recession either here or looming. We have a political divide. There's a lot of things going wrong. And you're probably thinking, I think I'm going to do this. I'm just going to quit learning. I'm not going to pursue my dream to be a web developer. Here's what I want to tell you. That a lot of these things you're seeing at the macro or the micro level is individual companies having issues with advertising. And tech is way bigger than the five name companies or the five fame companies that we talk about all the time. The reason in the news is they're the most famous, they're the largest, and anything that happens to them is going to be news. Now, tech is way bigger than that. And so while big companies may rise or fall or their employment levels may go up or down, it doesn't really matter. If you happen to get laid off at Facebook and you're a developer, you just go to another company and find another job. And that is the allure of tech because you can work at any company across any economic sector. And regardless of what's going on um, in our economy wide in the U.S., there's still going to be jobs in tech and it's still the best job that you can get because it insulates you from any downturn in any one segment and you simply just move to another segment. So you're watching this and you decide, okay, I'm going to be a developer. You've talked me off the ledge. So what do I learn? And I think this is the most common question that's asked all over the internet and YouTube and Twitter is what do I need to be learning when I'm trying to break in? And everyone has um, an opinion on that. And we do too here at Coder Foundry. But let me tell you why we think you should pick .NET. Now .NET is built and maintained by Microsoft. And this is in-demand tech. Now I want you to think of that word. I want you to focus on things to build websites that are in-demand. Things that are being done today, right now. The newest bleeding edge technology isn't as so important to you for the first time person trying to break in as it is to make someone who has a 10 or 15 year career because they want to maybe transition to that new technology. What I want you to do is pick something that you can use today on a job that's in demand that a lot of people are hiring for, and that is .NET. Now there's other stacks out there that you could pick. You could pick something in the JavaScript framework, and that's okay. It's just that Microsoft, where they're pushing the tooling, these languages, the frameworks, the cloud platform and everything, they are driving the conversation of how things should be built. And that influences buying decisions by companies. And that's why here at Coder Friendly, we still say .NET is probably the best platform to learn if you're trying to break in right now because it's in demand and a lot of people are hiring for it. So now that we've decided that we need to build web applications, let's talk about how you should learn. Now there's multiple ways that you can learn. You can go to a computer science four-year degree, a community college. You can go to a quality boot camp like we have here at Coder Foundry, or you can take a self-paced or self-learning option. All of those paths are valid. The thing that you need to ask yourself is, what do I have to show when I graduate any of these programs? Because the thing that you need more than anything is a portfolio of projects. In fact, I think it's essential for you to have a portfolio of projects in order for you to get a job. And if you don't have one, you need to go grab one. So let's say that you went to a bootcamp and in your bootcamp, you didn't build many things. In fact, you don't really have a, a capstone project or something you can show an employer. You need to acquire one at this point. And that's why Coder Foundry, not only should you have one enterprise project, at Coder Foundry, we build three. Um, we build a blog, we build a, an address book, and we also build the world famous bug tracker here, if you can um, watch our videos online. And so all of those applications are meant to impress an employer during the interview process. And if you don't have that, you need to question um, your program. If you're looking at programs right now and you say, okay, that program really doesn't build anything. But let's say you went to a community college and you really didn't build anything. What should you do now? Now you can probably take a self-learning option in addition to the education you have and learn how to build things. This is why we build our self-paced course. So for people that have already went through a really rigorous education, they've learned how to code, they've done all these things, but they really don't have anything to show yet. And I think it's essential on your portfolio that you have business, world-class business web applications 
that you can show someone that you know how to code and that proof of work is critical in the interview process. All right, so let's talk about boot camps. So boot camps sometimes get a bad name and we run a boot camp here, full disclosure. And what we try to do is look at what does the market need out of a student exiting a program. And so our program is designed, we think the skills are up here. Um, a lot of times on internet, on Twitter, they're gonna tell you the skills are really down here. And that's why we build three enterprise grade applications during our 12 week program. Now, let's say that you're evaluating boot camps and you don't have to come to Coder Foundry, but if you're looking at a coding boot camp or you're looking at a college, you gotta ask yourself, what am I going to build? What do I walk away from that learning experience with? And we see a lot of boot camps, and this is the reason why the outcomes are lower is because the portfolios are pretty weak. So if you've been through a boot camp and you're showing your portfolio and you're not getting the results that you want, it's probably because the projects are kind of weak. And you have to be objective about this and it's not about hurting your feelings. I'm trying to help you find a job. Even if you don't come to Coder Foundry, you need to look at the project you have and say, is that good enough? And here's what I, Here's the definition of it's good enough. Does it hit a database? Does it allow you to log in like authorization, authentication, and does it solve a recognizable business problem? Now, if your mainstream app, the one app that you're showing everyone is tic-tac-toe or simple to-do list, it's not good enough. You need to take what you've learned at that boot camp, expand upon that, make it better and make something stronger. And that's why we recommend building a bug tracker because it hits all of those kind of beats that people are looking for. We also build a blog because it also hits those beats. And we also have an address book that has a lot of features on it that also solves a lot of like really kind of cool problems that people are looking for you to solve. All of those things together, you put those on a portfolio and that portfolio will grant you interviews. So the question is, should I keep learning how to code and should I become a web developer in 2023? Yes. Even if you went to a bad program or you went to a community college, you went to a CS degree and you're still not having luck right now, you can take what you learned from there and then apply that to build bigger and better projects right now. So you should start right now with your learning process. So if you start right now, then by the end of 2023, you'll be working as a web dev. So if you decide to improve your portfolio by building business class projects and you go through that effort, you still need to win that technical interview. And I've made a video how you can use those projects right here to win your next technical interview. I'll see you over there.